Hello Gemini, Gemini Rising, and Gemini Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and card forecast for the week starting December 26th, 2016. And it's the last week of 2016, and I think a lot of us are all saying thank goodness for that. Quick reminder for you guys, your monthly astrology horoscopes for January are up on the main channel page under their own playlist right at the top. And if you would like to check out the big 2017 lecture I did for an hour and 45 minutes, it is up for viewing as well. And don't forget, classes are going on, astrology classes, online tarot classes, they're all online actually, on my website, integrativemysticism.com, if you'd like to sign up for those, they are available for registration. So, what is happening? What is happening with your astrology this week, Gemini? Well, in the beginning of the week, everyone's going to get called out. And not necessarily in a bad way. It's just about being put on the spot. We've got Jupiter in Libra, in your fifth house of love and romance and your relationship with your children, forming an opposition to Uranus, currently in your eleventh house of friendships and social networking. And the interesting thing is, is that usually when these two oppose, people start actually listening to us. People are actually willing to do what we're asking. They're picking up on what we're putting down. And you may find that a, a lover, a friend, or even a child is going to turn to you and say, Gemini, fine, okay, I get the picture, I get the point, I get what you're saying, so let's do it your way. Tell me what to do and I'll do it, okay? And this, the reason it's being put on the spot is some of you may be caught off guard. Some of you might not necessarily feel like you're ready to actually take full advantage of this opportunity. Because Uranus is not really a, a planet that is good at... I guess you could say, being given what it wants, that's why it's the planet of rebellion. <clears throat> so when you put it on the spot, it can be a little bit scary, but don't be afraid of that. Don't, don't respond with, hmm, you know, make sure that you understand that this week you are kind of being put in charge of these areas when it comes to how you handle your kids, how you handle your friends, how you handle your lover, and we, when we, they, we have everyone being that compliant, it is a lot of responsibility, because if people are doing exactly what you want to a T, and waiting for you to give them direction, you've got to do it well. Later on in the week, we've got Saturn, the planet of restrictions and challenges, but also at the same time, order, going to be squaring Chiron, currently in your 10th house of career. Now, Chiron is the celestial body that governs the wounds that we have that are not healed. Some people call it the wounded healer, I call it our baggage, and we've all got it. I'm obviously I'm going to be talking to everybody about this, so I'm not, you know, this isn't like a personal insult to the Gemini's. This is going to come up for everyone and everyone's zodiac. But when we have Saturn forming a square to our baggage, uh, from our partnership sector to our career sector, there will be some issues brought up with a business partnership, or a financial partnership, or a financial arrangement in a partnership as we need to be focusing on maybe there's too much of a need to achieve or a need to impress with this and it's starting to pull from the integrity of what we're trying to do. You know, this could also be a discussion about what's going on with a, with a romantic partnership or a marriage. You know, some people get very insecure if they don't get to show their relationship off. Um, but when, it, when are we having just a nice public display of affection and, you know, celebrating our love versus rubbing it in people's faces because we're insecure? You know, it's that kind of balance that we need to find. Same thing with money, same thing with business. Some people are very flashy, they want to make a, an impression because they're proud of their work. Some people are really in your face because they're trying to make a real hard hustler sell. And where is that in you, Gemini? Maybe it's, it's showing a bit too much, and maybe we need to be focusing on that a little bit, or focusing on that when a partner, business or romantic, is doing that instead. Because again, our insecurities are brought up between partnerships and career, and it is important to just honor that and pay attention to what does have an opportunity to be fixed. So, that being said, what is going on with your cards this week? Well, for your spiritual advice, we do have the card of the Maven. Very, very good card, because we actually have something coming around the bend this week where you need to be paying attention to what is meant to mature better in the future. You have a choice between having something that's, you know, a B plus now, or something that's an A plus in the future. And that's a that's an important thing to look at, because the Maven says, a harvest is ready, but it could be better if we wait. So you've got to decide, do you need it now? Okay, and why do we need it now? Or can we wait? Alright, this could have a lot to do with maybe the school you're applying to. 
Okay, this could have to do with maybe the purchase of a home or maybe a big shift on the home front. Could have to do with love, could have to do with travel. But the Maven card is basically talking about if we, you know, if we let this age a little bit more, it's going to taste all the better. And so you're going to want to pay a little bit of attention to, you know, when I say a little bit more, I mean like max two months. But when I see, you know, when I look at the, the Maven card here, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, seeing, okay, yeah, we're being put on the spot. We could have it now. But do we want it as it would be right now, when it could be better later? For your Earth sector, when it comes to your work and finances, we do have the Three of Cups inverted. And this card is talking about some clashes on the work front. We already talked a little bit about that. That could be a big issue uh, with that Saturn Chiron square because usually with the Three of Cups inverted, people are becoming very shallow. They're becoming very image oriented, uh, very presentation oriented. All style, no substance, you know. And I think that this might be a challenge that you're having with the way work is being handled. Uh, whether it's with your with uh, with the workforce that you're on, uh, maybe people are doing it so they can get more funding. They're doing it for a marketing campaign, but again, all style, no substance. You know, it's getting very shallow, and there could be some you know some dissonance in there that we need to confront because it's actually harder to do a quality job when half the job is spent making you know it look polished. And I think that for those of you looking for a new job, that may be something that you kind of noticed this week in an interview. Okay, because again. It's, it's a hard sell, it's a hard hustler sell, but it's not actually, you know, more work is put into the presentation than what's actually there, okay? It's like trying to polish a calculator and pass it off as a smartphone, it just doesn't work. And this could even be with a financial deal, and I think a lot of you Gemini people would be wise not to be duped. For your communications with air, we do have the Hierophant card upright. And this card can actually be really good for those of you who are looking to get some kind of notification of acceptance or approval uh, from an authority figure uh, or a work body. Some of you may be trying to enroll, again, in a, in a, in a course, or some of you may be trying to uh, get uh, permission or authorization to go forward with a big plan, but you need to get, you know, permits, city permits, you've got to, you know, you've got to get the acceptance letter. This could be an acceptance letter or an, an invitation for an acceptance letter, even for work, which is great. Uh, but with the Hierophant card upright, I like this card because it does make something official. And you can do that during a Mercury retrograde, okay? As long as you're not in a situation right now where you are loaning anyone money, or you are taking out any kind of, uh, I, I guess you could say, IOUs or accepting any IOUs, Mercury Retrograde is currently in your 8th house, so as long as you're not loaning others the money, you should be in good shape. For your challenge this week with Fire, we do have the Chariot card upright. Again, you're being put on the spot. Can you take the lead, Gemini? I think that sometimes Geminis can, and I think that sometimes Geminis really would like to be more of like a support cast, <laughs> you know, in, in a lot of situations in their lives. They'd like to be sort of the unsung hero, not the hero up in front. But the, the, the Chariot card upright is saying, you know, your challenge this week is making sure that everything that you have, you know, uh, you know that you're being put on the spot with can work together. Um, because you are going to be able, you're going to be able to actually overcome a lot of obstacles this week if you are willing to, again, answer the questions as they are presented to you. Again, like we talked about with the astrology, hey, you're on the spot. Everyone's finally going to listen to you and do what you say. Don't drop the ball is basically what the chariot card is reminding us of because the chariot card is saying that even if it seems contradictory, even if it seems like an oxymoron, uh, you know, because it's different than what you put out there, you know, because sometimes, you know, the chariot card can talk about a need to reveal our true selves. You know, maybe you're afraid to reveal your true self because you've been, um, you know, you're afraid it's not going to get celebrated because you posed as somebody else for the last few months at this office or at this situation. Don't be afraid to do that. Believe me, there'll be some pleasant surprises. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we do have the Two of Swords inverted. Time to be whittling down the unnecessary, uh, I guess you could say, distractions for a lot of you Gemini people. Because the Two of Swords inverted does talk about a commitment being made. And it looks like you and your partner could be making a commitment on the time that you're going to be having together. Or the Two of Swords inverted could say that you and your partner are kind of forming a united front and deciding that we need to maybe start cutting some people out, maybe spend a little bit less time, a little bit less time with those neighbors, a little bit less time with those, those friends, those family members, 
Because the Two of Swords inverted is talking about a need to downsize from what is unhealthy, <clears throat> or what is uh, an un something unhealthy that got too big, or just too negative and too, un too unpleasant. For those of you who are currently looking for new love, the Two of Swords inverted does say that we will find somebody who has a lot of the same thoughts and philosophies as you. So your test this week is, are you looking for a compliment, or are you looking for your exact double? Because you'll probably get the double this week, and that might be a fun experience to have too. So that is your forecast, Gemini. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you'd like to get a session with me, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.